So, don't be fooled. This picture was chosen to be the disc for the blissful smile of the regular old lady, not because of her missing teeth. So there we go. We remind it almost daily that the population is aging at a rate never recorded in history, and that we're experiencing a major demographic shift thanks to the baby boomers. So what's the big deal? The bad news then is that we're not immortal and not getting any younger. But the good news is that becoming wrinkled is not a disease. At 60, you don't lose your, your zest for life. In fact, some says it gets better with time. So relax, your turn will come. Many people are debating that the cost of caring for those new seniors, some argue that the painstaking adjustment will have to be made to prevent the system to go bankrupt, while others want to hold on to the status quo at all costs in the name of the psychosy. Can they do not do it? In the meantime, we do agree on one thing though. This demographic shift is having a major impact on the very fabric of our communities, the way we live, our collective priorities, structure, and services. But make no mistake, this is not to occur in the distant future. The train has already left the station with loads of seniors on board for the ride, a fun one, hopefully. So what does it mean for us in the zoo? According to this last census, there are some 80,000 people living in our city. No, we're not 75,000 as the old science still indicates. And our seniors account for 19,000, which is 23.7% today. In less than 10 years, the ratio should be in the neighborhood of 35 to a percent. And by 2028, the number could swell to a staggering 41%. Now, is that a wake-up call or what? While the business community is taking full advantage of this lucrative market, politicians, it seems, tend to forget sometimes that it is the seniors more than any other age group who decide their fate every four years. Hello. Is anybody listening? More facts to ponder. 97% of all seniors in our country live at home and wish to die in their own bed. 90% receive all their home care from, from family and friends, not from government or community. 77% of caregivers are women. Seniors are the backbone of volunteerism. Now consider this. Government and community services would, go, would, would come to a complete halt if ever volunteers were to go on strike for any length of time. Now let's look at some misguided assumptions about seniors, such as at 60 or 65 you become inevitably irrelevant in the workforce, unable or not expected to offer any significant contribution to your community. By 70 or 75, you're almost good for nothing, expected to be sick, disabled, and therefore you become a big financial burden to society. Sorry, Leonard. This is not to deny the process of aging. Yes, the body does grow, uh, does slow down with age, though the heart stays young. So, we want to ensure that our seniors will, uh, will live the rest of their lives with dignity and a sense, and not be seeking. That they move around town with easy access and a sense of security. That they avoid being a housebound in winter for fear of falling to have access to affordable retirement facilities or programs for home retrofitting, access to proper home, home nursing care, access to a variety of fulfilling social activities, and so on. Surely, seniors are entitled to be honored by their community and they deserve the respect in the, from their fellow citizens without being patronized or addressed in a childlike manner. With this in mind, the WHO launched a three, year, a three years ago a consultation with seniors and service providers from 22 countries. The result, the publication of, in 2007 of a practical guide to help cities become age-friendly. In line with WHO, Canada has produced a similar guide, this time for the benefit of rural communities. The beauty of it all is that whether you live in Richard's Landing, so St. Mary, or Toronto, the two guides pro uh, pro proposed a, a similar process of engaging public dialogue around eight sectors of community living, where simple initiatives can have a major impact on seniors' quality of life, therefore, for all citizens. In the sewer forum sponsored by the Ontario Senior Secretary took place on last October 1st. The real success of this initiative, however, would be measured through the follow-up action plan, 
And it is good to know that a community-based steering committee is being put in place to get the ball rolling. Is the Zoom far behind the pack in serving seniors? No, we're not. Can we improve the situation? Of course we can. And to paraphrase, to paraphrase a familiar slogan, we all have a stake in making the Zoom more, more age-friendly for the benefit of this generation and future ones. Thank you.